This is the Mauritanian capital Nouakchott in campaign mode. With two weeks of rallies coming to a close on Friday, people enjoyed the last evening of campaigning under tents and singing songs with slogans. But behind the air of carnival are tensions and tough issues of a nation badly hit by poverty and political instability. It's the first legislative and municipal election since the coup that toppled the democratically elected president in 2008. The leader of that coup is still in power after having won a presidential race a year later. The main opposition parties never really came to terms with the military coup and the arrangements that followed it. Now they have decided to boycott the vote, leaving the ruling party in an awkward position. The decision of some opposition parties to boycott the election makes us feel sad here in the Union for the Republic, and we believe that they have no valid justifications. But two important opposition parties have accepted the challenge. We have decided to get over this long period of political wrangling, hoping to reach a phase of calm and normalcy. The local Muslim Brotherhood movement has recently gained some popularity. But its leaders say their intention to take part in the poll is not to give legitimacy to those in power at the moment. Our aim is to take the country into a path of freedom, to stop military interventionism in politics and help people freely choose their representatives. Easy to say, but apart from the political crisis, Mauritania has a series of other problems. The country remains among the poorest in West Africa, despite its many natural resources in minerals, fish, agriculture and livestock. And its high illiteracy rates, broken educational system, tribalism, caste divisions and the impact of a recent history of slavery could be a threat to its stability. So many in Mauritania and abroad are waiting to see if these municipal and legislative elections will bring some solution to these problems. Mohamed Val, Al Jazeera.